Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Filed for divorce six months ago, still in the process but feel weak mentally mental health slash depression slash loneliness two years, one son. I filed for a divorce for what I think was a very valid reason. I found proof to think that my wife was planning to be or was very interested in becoming a sugar baby, prostitute. I found one profile with her picture and information on it. Her initial reaction to the divorce was to laugh and she said it was not a problem. After reading that I accused her of being a prostitute and was looking for full custody, she was upset of course. We were in the process of moving states. When we got to the new one, we lived separately and I kept my son. I had a feeling she would make a new profile here and so I created a fake one. I found her profile, with private pics only available after she agrees to show them. It was her. We started talking and agreed on dollar for two weekly encounters and gave her an address to meet up. It was the same day slash time she was supposed to see our son. She cancelled on our son and then I cancelled on our fake meeting moved it to that same weekend. I saw her driving to the address I gave her and ended the convo with get life a you. At hash percent. She then sent me a text saying it was a prank and she knew it was me all along. However, there was never an indication of this being a prank and she was never acting in a joking manner. Sent selfies in the convo, made claims that she wasn't perfect and that she was down for most sexual things. I believe she stopped pursuing this and decided to actually work for a living. Waitressing, bartending, etc. Five to six months have passed by and I'm guessing she is realizing life as a single mom isn't that nice. She starts texting me and telling me how much she misses me and loves me. How we should get back together, etc. There is a lot more to it but those are the major facts. Since plenty of time has passed, I feel less hurt and don't give much importance to what she did. I feel more inclined to get back with her than to finish the divorce. Of course, this is dumb and I know I need to follow through. I am in an extremely promising situation in my life, career, school, still a young late twenties, and it would be dumb to consider getting back with her, divorce or no divorce, because we have a son together. WTF is wrong with me? Why am I feeling this way? There are multiple red flags with this girl. I have gone out and met other girls since this happened, slept with two, not dating any. No interest, but I don't care about them. Somehow, I'm rationalizing every day about the possibility of getting back with her. I have done the reading. I have looked at the proof. Regardless of the decisions I made in the past, the things she has done since we separated are even too much to get back with her. I'd cry I feel so weak mentally. Was expecting to get better and motivated with time but I guess seeing her every time she picks my son affects me. I am working out two thirds days a week but with no motivation. Ask away. I'm not sure what is going on. I usually point out trauma bonding and codependency but those may not be applicable in your case. Having second thoughts about getting divorced but the thought of what she did fills me up with anxiety and disgust. I believe in the institution of marriage and its importance to society. Especially when there are kids involved. I don't think my son will have a better way to be raised than with both parents working together. Even if I receive help from my mother, she won't be as good a partner raising him as the mother would be. So. I think I should get back together but then I think about her and what she did and a meltdown happens. Am I overthinking this? Will it hurt your kids to model their relationships after yours? My son already has a girlfriend who treats him more or less like my now ex treated me, and he is behaving like I did. He is not happy but thinks he should stay. I have talked to many people and you are the first one to put that thought in my head. Do you know where I can read more about kids modeling their relationship to their parents? Unfortunately I don't have links for that. Man have you gone to counseling? Seems like you have a lot of things to sort out. And maybe you are depressed? Her actions seem pretty damaging if true. 
you are still young, lots of life ahead of you. I sympathize with your brother, a very complicated situation indeed. Perhaps she was going through a really bad phase, I would guess that there's some really low self-esteem issues with her, and for some reason she felt she had to degrade herself and be treated poorly by other people, but she didn't want to be treated poorly by you, i.e., bedroom roleplay, where she pretends to be a prostitute, if she has some heavy emotional baggage in her past, she needs to get past that, and perhaps you can help her. I'm married and my wife is getting an apartment tomorrow. I have three children in high school and my wife is going through some kind of midlife crisis. She's not having an affair, but she's confused, and what kind of husband would I be if I abandon her, and tell her to take off and take her chances. Good luck. Update 1 plus years after divorce being final. Post separation. Quick recap I caught my then wife being a sugar baby during our marriage. That behavior lasted around the same time as our marriage, around two years. During this time, we had a kid of whom I have 80% custody of. Post separation, it was rough for all of us. Very rough for me. We tried working things out but I wasn't into it as I used to be. Post separation, pre-final divorce, she was already dating, seeing other people, trying to move on while telling me she wanted to work things out. They didn't. So we finalized divorce 01 2020. 2021 update. STD I had stayed pretty clear from her. No contact as much as possible and only talking about our child. On Valentine's Day, I was with my son and he was already sleeping. I get a text from the ex late at night asking if she can come over because she doesn't feel good in her head. I let her. Long story short, we sleep together and a week later, I had symptoms of my first ever STD. I went to the doctor and it was gonorrhea. I'm not mad at her, but myself. I let her know because I know women can confuse them with UTIs. Claims over the phone that's impossible. She later texts saying she wants to talk in person. She comes over and apologizes. She claims she always used protection, even though she always told me she doesn't like condoms, so no idea how it happened. On my end, the timing and no protection, it was her 100%. Because I'm not mad, she takes it in a different way than she should have. Asks me to please reconsider things over and work it out. No. I got her house for my son and I and we moved in. Asked her to not come in since it was my place. She doesn't like it one bit. She insists many times for a week and finally, I cave. She usually comes Fridays slash Saturday nights before she goes out. All dressed up wanting to tease. Memorial Day weekend was supposed to be her weekend with kid. Friday night tells me she can't be with him but wants to video call. I was sleeping for that request. Saturday I attempted to call twice, no answer all day. Sunday, she says she's sick and can't really talk. Monday, I attempted and she didn't answer. Three hours later she calls and video talks with our son. Mondays are hers, but she's still sick. That afternoon, I went to get some food about an hour from where I live. I happened to run into the husband of the friend she claimed was taking care of her while she's sick, when she said she was sick, I offered help and she said 30 was helping. 30's husband doesn't live near there, I'd cow or why I run into him and I only met him once over a year ago because of my ex being there with the kid. I ask him how his wife is and says she's in party town for the weekend. So my ex went to a party for the weekend and lied about being sick. I don't mind her partying. Good, but when it affects my son and I lie to him, it sucks. I don't want the covering for her to become the norm. It also pisses me off. I was feeling bad for her and taking time out of my day to video call so she could talk to our son. So, I decided to no video call and 100% no contact and no more friendliness. Lying is just too much and I'm fed up, only took 4 years. It sounds like you're still learning that allowing her any more access to your life than absolutely necessary always turns out bad. Look into a parenting app, have all communication recorded on text. 
No more stop-ins to your house, she can keep her clap-ridden ass on the curb where she belongs. It sounds like you're still learning that allowing her any more access to your life than absolutely necessary always turns out bad. Look into a parenting app, have all communication recorded on text. No more stop-ins to your house, she can keep her clap-ridden ass on the curb where she belongs. Op, this is what you need to do. It sounds like you have the kind of personality of people who like to please others. That coupled with poor boundaries you are in the situation that you are right now. I'd suggest starting to start recording each and every interaction with her, either by video or noted down in a notebook after the fact. I think eventually you are going to have to use all that to get full custody of your son and grant just supervised visitations to her. I am not sure if you have read about the 180 that gets talked often around here. If you haven't please read those and follow the recommendations to the letter. And remember, there's really no lesson to be learned from the second kick from the mule. So, try and avoid getting kicked again. I really feel guilty when I'm not friendly. In my post, I mentioned how she was feeling sick. Yesterday she sent a message saying she actually had surgery and that's why she can't be with the kid. Maybe it is true, maybe it isn't. Probably plastic surgery, but I feel bad. Why does she need to lie? Pretend she doesn't know what she has and to be in such a bad state she can't even answer phone calls or be with her son. Maybe she is in party city. I I just can't help but feel bad sometimes when I enforce boundaries. She lies because she knows that you want to believe that she is a good person when deep down you know that she is garbage. If you don't enforce boundaries, both she and your child will lose respect for you, and you will invite further problems with both. The safe assumption is that she's lying whenever she tells you something. If the end result is that you get to see your child more, what does it really matter why she's unavailable? Friendly isn't what you should be doing. She should be getting cordial at best. Talk about the kid only, don't tell her about your life and don't listen to lies about hers. Sounds like you're binding for a woe that SHT all over you, and your son, gave you a venereal disease, have some self-respect, children model themselves after their parents. All you're showing him is how to be a doormat. If you wanna bang a woe, hire one, they're cleaner than your ex, you'll pay far less in the end, and best of all, they please you and then, leave. How nice. Number 23 hours of BS for the 15 minutes of fun and the 45 minutes of associated bulls and tea stop with the, I feel mean crap, did she feel mean gargling another man's spunk, or spreading her legs for whomever. Ex-wife gave you gonorrhea, I would contact the solicitor, lawyer and sue the hell out of her. No your ex-wife was not confused with UTI, she knew what she was doing. Stop letting her into your house. If she wants to meet your son then she can arrange a day out with him. Continue to maintain North Carolina with her unless it is regarding your child. This will stop the lies you had to invent for your child. A little jab here, but it's given in love, for years, you're a little slow. Around two years since I found out and all the craziness started. Slow to move on, yes. It was hard for me mentally and the jab well deserved. I wish you well. It does get better. Best thing you can do right now is be the best dad you can. The post and your comments show you still haven't moved on. You're too nice and she knows how to keep you forever in that position of one leg in one leg out. If you ever get a partner I pity that person because your ex is still a significant part of your life. She gets you to cave to anything she wants. She gets sex from you, she comes and goes to your house when she wants, changes plans as she likes. She lies to you and you can't see it and you're even defending her. She's still a huge part of your life and it's concerning. You should change that. Most of my actions lie in the fear of whatever she's gonna do to me legally. Op you say that, but you got 80% of the custody the first time. Do you know how hard it is to get that? You hold all the marbles legally. There's nothing holding you back besides you. If I'm perfect can I lose time going back to court? Not if you keep a good track record of every time she misses a day with them. 
You have a very strong case if she is missing as much time or cancelling at the last minute or not returning phone calls for days at a time like you say she is. Use that against her. She's using you and you know she is. Show your kid what a good marriage is supposed to be like. What would you want for them if they were in your position? Good. You may want to look into apps and online calendars for custody issues. This can minimize your required contacts with her and keep a pretty official record of events such as her skipping out her custody on this weekend. I seriously need to follow this advice. Been suggested many times in the past. Dude she knows you so well, she knows exactly what to say for you to bend your back to allow her to step all over you. Once you set boundaries she'll claim you changed but really you're just a stronger person who's not gonna let himself get stepped on. She clearly has no respect for you, your time, your house. Please stop, you're just lowering your self-worth every time she does this to you. You are such a good father to your son, y'all don't deserve her. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, knows me too well. The shit she says slash said is always on point for me to feel bad. Instinctively repeating things I've said to feel a connection because we want the same thing. Even though we don't and it's just because she's repeating something I said time ago. But you're right, I can't keep making decisions out of fear. It's obvious you're using your son to stay in contact with your ex-cheater. Maybe read up on 180 and North Carolina protocols. If you're going to do it, might as well do it right. I'm using my son or she is? I have read about using an app and maybe that's what we need. She is and you are pretending you don't have a choice, not to be mean but you are doormat right now. So here is what you say when she knocks the door, go away, it's not your day with kid and shuts the door in her face. What will it take for you to grow a spine? She already cheated on you, she already lied to you, she already crossed every boundary, and she already gave you an STD. What will it take? Does the next STD to be Eds or herpes before you stop teaching your son through your actions that it's okay to let people walk all over you? I know it's hard to hear, but at this point you are a voluntary victim here. Agreed, but what keeps me from growing a spine is the fear of going back to court for custody rearrangement. Even if she doesn't really want to, she could do it out of spite. Again, the current schedule is the court ordered one and the one we're following. It's been followed for a little over a year. Am I worrying too much for something that's improbable? Stop putting up with it. The problem is not only her, it's you. You seem unwilling to set appropriate boundaries. This isn't a healthy relationship for your son. He doesn't value a casual relationship with his mom. It's more harm than good. Set established and appropriate boundaries and quit giving in. It's literally hurting both of you repeatedly. You keep giving her ammo and then are angry at yourself when you give in. You need to cultivate your love for your child to the point that it's stronger than her hold over you. But isn't the love for my child producing the want to make him happy with both mom and dad to some extent? You are in denial mode. You are denying what is right in front of you. And she is going to keep doing what she's doing, because she knows she can have her way with you, whenever she wants to. You need to learn a few things to help you better understand her behavior, and character disordered people in general. Learning more about that will better help you understand that she will not change. You have to change your perspective here, and look at her for who she truly is. You need to focus on her behavior and actions, not on her words. Unless you do so, you and subsequently your son will keep getting railroaded by her. Something she doesn't seem to care about. Look up narcissism, I am not an expert, but based on your post, I think this might help. A good source for narcissism is Dr. Amini on YouTube. Also check out chumplady.com and read her book. Accept your ex for who she is. Stop making excuses for her behavior to your son. If she doesn't show up, and your son asks why, you can reply with I don't know, but I'm here for you. Wanna talk about it? And take it from me up, I remember feeling terrible for my son, because he didn't have the traditional family unit of mom and dad being together. I also saw some of my friends who were still married, yet miserable. 
and I saw my son who is much happier and thriving in comparison to their kids. The point I'm making is, a child doesn't necessarily need a mom and dad together to be happy. One dedicated parent is more than enough for a child to be happy and have his slash her needs met. A single parent and a child, children are a complete family by itself. Glad you finally learned caving brings bad results. You might be a slow learner but look at all the smucks who never learned. I've known from the beginning, I'm just afraid of cutting the umbilical cord once and for all. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.